Hello, welcome to another tutorial video. What we're going to be doing now is looking at the mark scheme for question five and six. And I say five and six and mean exactly that because the <clears throat> mark scheme for them is exactly the same. The communication skill, the organization of ideas, and the technical writing skill that you need is exactly the same for both. The only difference is that it's a slightly different piece of writing. So your skill in writing has to be the same, but the actual focus of your writing is going to be slightly different. In question five, you're going to be describing and explaining, and question six, you're going to be arguing and persuading, and or should I say. So question five is worth 16 marks. 10 of which for, are for communication of content and organization, and 6 are for the actual technical accuracy of your writing. Uh, we normally call that spelling, punctuation, and grammar. It's not completely accurate, but it will do for our purposes. And question 6 is worth 24 marks, 16 are for the communication of content and organization, and 8 are for the actual writing. So what we're going to do over the next series of videos, we're going to look first of all at overall elements that we need to include then we're going to look at some model answers and we're also going to look at examples of this so I'm not really sure exactly what sequence I'll do them in yet but uh, hopefully if you if you refer to all of them it will give you a good chance of doing well I have to say as well I've really done I think I, I've done put together a video that was really useful last year uh, for the argue persuade advice in particular so if you have a look through the channel and just type in argue persuade advise in the search engine on my channel page it should come up and that will give you a good head start as well because I'm not gonna flog a dead horse even further by by doing that video again um, okay so starting off then three areas you've got the communication and you've got organization of ideas and you've got the skills so communication is basically what you get across organization of ideas is how you structure what you're getting across and skills is how accurate what you're getting across is so those three things are what you're going to be marked on in both we start then with the paraphrases trying to make it a little bit more simple for ourselves so the first thing we've got to do is communicate in a way which is sorry communicate in a way which is convincing and increasingly compelling so we have to sound assured the whole way through our piece and it has to get better and more complete so one of the trademarks of a, a B grade essay is that it starts off really well and then it just kind of drifts away we need to make sure that we you know and then we still get marks for the first two paragraphs we need to make sure that we start well and then we just get better as we go and that's by making our work grow which I'll come to in one of the next videos second thing form content style are consistently matched to purpose and audience and the and becoming assuredly matched so you're writing for the right audience whatever is actually put to you or whoever should I say is actually put to you in the question and your form is being born in mind so this is going to be in a newspaper and they're well mixed so you've <clears throat> you know the whole time that in each paragraph or in every bit that you're writing we get the sense that you're writing to a local audience and you're writing in the form of an article rather than an essay or a pamphlet or a speech so for example if you're writing a speech then <clears throat> you're going to be using perhaps references to the audience something like that to, to make it stand out so yes your form and content are definitely definitely for the right audience and the, the the right form engages with the reader with structured and developed writing with an increasing wide range of integrated and complex details so that means your topic grows you don't repeat the same sentences you don't kind of rehash the same things your point actually grows and includes details and your writing on the whole is well structured and different structures are used so in it being well structured that means that things are in the place that they should be you've kind of got a very clear kind of opening a very clear ending at, at its most basic level and then you've got clear um, sections and points that you're developing in between in whatever kind of writing it is because every kind of writing has its uh, its own form and its own structure within it um, and then the different structures used throughout so this is more in reference to maybe ways that you're trying to engage with the audience so you might open with really technical language then you might move sorry it's a really technical paragraph then you might move into uh, a kind of reflection on on the problems of it then you're going to move into the development of one certain ideas etc 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 so it, it's got a feel and a structure that way for argue persuade advice sorry <laughs> uh, old school for argue persuade one of the things that you're going to be looking at for that is say in the first in, in structure wise is going to be the opening might be you know you horrify the reader with your first 
well, per first paragraph, then you might want to make them feel guilty. Then you might want to give them some hope. Then you might want to show classic examples of things that have worked. And then you might want to round off with inviting them to join your course. So the structuring there is, you know, uh, very specific. Um, <clears throat> writes in a writes in a formal way, employing a tone that is appropriate, serious, but also manipulative, subtle, and increasingly abstract. So you can write in a way that reflects the tone of the piece. So this one is obviously going to be serious because it's a difficult decision. It's not going to be, um, you know, should I should I should I put a, a blue hat on or a red hat? Obviously, I suppose if you lived in LA, that might be a bit relevant, relevant actually. But it's not going to be, you know, whether I should buy a hat with a dolphin on it or whether I should buy a hat with a panda on it. They're, they're not difficult decisions you know you're really going to be looking at maybe moving out or you're going to be looking at you know ideas of uh, you know an abortion obviously it's a massively difficult decision and and obviously you, with this you can make up things but we'll come to that at uh, different times so just make sure that you've got a reflection in your writing of of the, the task you're actually asked to do and that you can get the reader to understand and agree with your point of view and you can the concentrate the link to wider themes and ideas so basically what that means is that you can go into the ethical or the moral or the themes and ideas that are actually linked with whatever the topic is so say in this one we'd actually written something about um focusing and studying for example you know the, the difficult decision you had to make was you know or, or giving up one sport for for your studies or vice versa etc then you might actually have to do with the idea of uh, wider themes of responsibilities might be to do improving um, your future uh, obviously the idea of being responsible the idea of uh, improving your focus etc etc all of these are slightly wider themes than just what you initially did you know i stopped playing football to concentrate on my studies for example it's um it's uh yeah the differentiation should be quite clear um use linguistic devices confidently at uh, the right time for the right effect and that's in reference to using linguistic devices such as rhetorical questions etc etc in a consciously crafted way that is increasingly sustained so you have to use things at the right time for the right effect and obviously if you can use irony and satire etc then you're going to be definitely in the higher bands but um, it will only work in in certain circumstances um, and I suppose the, the, the best thing I can say about that is to with the, and that's why I put in right place right effect don't overdo it with one. That would be the worst thing that you can do. I remember putting a student in for early entry a couple of years ago, and I, I thought for you know uh, all the world he'd get an A. I was even secretly hoping for an A star, and it came back with a B. And I was really shocked. Uh, so I asked for his ma ma sorry his paperback. I got it marked, got it looked over, and when I looked over his piece, this is the area that he'd fallen down in the argue persuade advice as you know his writing, and he'd got a C for that response. And I was like, well, what did he do wrong? And I looked down it, and he just put in like a simile in or an alliteration in every single line to the point where it became ridiculous it was it was and the examiner even commented um you know this this boy really likes alliteration and it was uh yeah he just completely didn't put them in at the right time or, or for the right effect it's not just to shove in as many as you can for an aa star it's to try and appropriately pick and place the ones that you're actually going to use shows control of extensive vocabulary with word choices becoming increasingly ambitious it shows great range and choice of vocabulary. The important word there, or the most important word there, is choice, so that you can actually use it again at the right time. You'll see with ANA Star, it's not just about being able to do it; it's about being able to do things at the at the right time. 